Well, thanks, Diana. It's great to have Diana as our moderator, um, and I'm so glad that we have, have her for the session. It's fantastic to be part of the AC 2021 uh, once again, uh, part of the virtual conference. Um, thanks to CWA for inviting me again. I'm going to have a very short two-part presentation. Uh, part one is going to be on compliance resilience, how you can tool your own program, a DIY, uh, kind of walking through some of the things you can do as a supervisor or a manager to make sure your program is up to snuff and you're, you're ready to go before the inspectors arrive. Part two, I'm going to have a couple of uh, uh, testimonials from small system operators about uh, what they're doing well and the challenges that they see with the current uh, staff and formal draft that we're here talking about today. So a couple of questions I'd like to ask uh, before we get going. How resilient do you think your agency is for an inspection by a regular, an NGO, or maybe an interested ratepayer? Top three things your agency is doing well with the current WDRs, and maybe your top concerns about the current staff informal draft. If you could be thinking about these, would would help. Uh, maybe possibly even get come up with some questions at the end. So starting off with resilience, I think resilience is a very important item to cover. We covered it last year in our SSMP uh, review in our uh, best practice session for the workshop last year with Sam Rose. And we started off talking about what does compliance look like? What does enforcement look like? Because without knowing those, it's kind of hard to gauge how you want to prepare for, for an audit or inspection or just be ready to go to improve your program. You know, what does compliance look like is super important. A lot of agencies are out there wondering what it looks like. Uh, these videos I'm going to show you here in a minute that we did last year will really help pinpoint that for you. So the SSO library is probably the best place to start right here, the link in yellow, for all kinds of different documentation, presentations, example inspection reports, uh, enforcement reports. You don't need to review them all, but you review a couple of them at least so they're familiar. Again, if you're going to do your own program review, this is a great place to start. The self audits presentation here that the water boards gave in 2011 is still there. Again, lays out the best practices for what the expectations are, what the permit says. This is the place to start. So highly recommend that. We did a really in-depth uh, with all these components for supervisors and managers last year. So if you didn't catch it, I'd highly recommend going back and looking at it. Understanding enforcement, auditing your own SSMP. Again, doing it yourself. If you need to bring somebody in, fine. But if you don't, all the tools are right here. How to avoid violations, how to get ready before the inspectors arrive, the pre-inspection questionnaire, et cetera, et cetera. So highly recommend looking at that. I'll have a link at the end here up on YouTube. That's available. You can also get it here, of course, uh, after the, the workshop. And then uh, last but not least is knowing what the inspectors are going to look for because that's really a key area, being prepared, going to the US EPA website. I've shown this many times in the past. Uh, the water boards have published this many times uh, over and over to show that this is basically what they use to audit collection systems. So way before the inspectors arrive, uh, you can have your program ready to go. And more importantly, you can improve your program and reduce spills by using these tools. The desktop review, looking at your system uh, like the water board would, doing the pre-inspection conference, walking your staff through uh, how you're doing with your different programs, doing the actual inspection. You can actually do it yourself. You can walk through that inspection process and audit your own your own program and write it up in such a way that's fair and judges your program for the things that are strong, the things that need need work. This is what we're doing with people we're helping now is actually walking through this process. Uh, and that way, you know, at the end of the day, your step five, you'll have a report that you're comfortable with that lays it all out that's accurate and that you, will back you up and give you some resilience uh, way before the inspectors arrive. So that's the process. Um, highly recommend, you know, again, going and looking at those, those tools that are available. So part two, I'm really excited to present some information from Mr. Terrence Williams from Humboldt, Humboldt CSD. He's a small system operator that has a lot of experience and gave some comments to me over the phone. Uh, so I'm going to read off kind of the things he, he said. And then we're going to have an interview with Cody Tompkins from Barstow City. He was in the program last year, uh, a really strong operator in a very small system, disadvantaged community, a really good program in place. So we have these two. I'm going to start with Terrence. And I'm just going to walk you through his notes of what he said. 
things that they think they're doing really well. He has a very strong uh, analytical program to look at CCTV and cleaning and really get in there and do some strategic uh, CCTV and cleaning with his system with the limited money that they have to really avoid SSOs. Of course, he'd like to do more with what he has. And he said he's very interested in some maybe some technical expertise from other systems or possibly even maybe a grant from the water boards to help them really retool and do more with what they have. So that was one idea that he had. He'd like to see more money shifted away from the engineering type of planning studies for you know improvements into more uh, technical assistance. Again, for them to really focus on strat strategies and uh, ideas and things they can do to improve their current program. So he's looking at that. He also had a very interesting comment to maybe have a fix-it ticket program. The water boards have talked about this before, where you have a spill, you pay a small fine, that spill has been resolved. There will be no third party uh, potential for a lawsuit with it being resolved with formal enforcement. So that fix it ticket style would help them, he said, because they have been uh, through a uh, NGO settlement with Riverwatch and it, it was very costly and it didn't allow them to put any money back in their system like possibly a fix it ticket program could if it had a compliance project element with it. So that's what they're really interested in seeing with the new WDRs and you know shipping away from the, the, the liability from having third parties out there, having the water boards take an action for a spill with a small monetary fine uh, as, a, as something to present to, to water boards. So I'm sure he'll be following up more on this. Uh, he said he was going to be writing a letter to the water boards at some point. So that was something that he said on the phone. He also said um, basically uh, he would have to increase his staff by 20 to 30 percent to comply with the current staff informal draft. So that's a pretty hard hitting uh, statement. 20 to 30 percent increase in staff to deal with the, the increase in uh, planning, data collection, improved record keeping, et cetera, et cetera. So Again, he was really uh, uh, complimentary of the water boards, you know, doing all this outreach. You know, that, that was great for me to talk to him. I worked with him uh, and did an audit of his collection system before at another agency when he worked at another agency before I left the water board. So uh, really good resource uh, to go to. I'm sure he'd be open to talking to anybody. Again, Terrence Williams, Humboldt CSD, and uh, would highly recommend talking to him. And so next I'm going to turn it over to Cody Tompkins. I did a short interview with him. And let's hear what he has to say. Uh, Cody, how do you do your own review of your SSMP and your SSMP audits? Um, do you have uh, a process matter, for that? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we're, um, we're doing one right now. So um, uh, every, every year, um, the SSMP goes through um, an audit. And what happens is, is uh, we start at our um, lowest level staff um, so that they understand um, this tool and this mechanism um, because, you know, um, the frontline staff are the ones who are, who are doing a lot of the work. And so we want to make sure that they, they understand this document. Um, and then, uh, so it'll go through uh, those staff members and then off to supervisors. And then we will uh, review um, the document as well. And then we meet as a department and just and make sure that uh, um, just there's no questions. You know, we want to make sure that the document is clean, um, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, that's uh, pretty cut and dry on our, on our review. Is that something you're presenting to your board also every year, or is it only when it's required? Uh, no, not every year is presented to the board. I think it's uh, every five years, I believe. Right. I might be getting one of the regulations mixed up a little bit there, but uh, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. great. Well, we really thank you for your time and, and all your comments. Uh, it'll be helpful, especially for small systems. How many miles of pipe do you have? 113 miles. 113 miles. Okay. And what okay. was your population again? Um, so the census, I think we're hovering around uh, 23,000. 23,000. Okay. So you're a small to medium size. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we're just barely over that threshold of, of, of small. Um, we are considered a... a severely disadvantaged community based on the median uh, okay. uh, household income. But uh, yeah, we're, we're right over the. There's a spot. lot of them in the regulated under the sanitary sewer order, just like you. So it's, mm -hmm. you're, uh, you're leading the pack. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that's one of the things that, I mean, anybody can reach out to us. Uh, they don't have to recreate the wheel. Um, right. You know, we can, we can share uh, workable documents that, you know, somebody Perfect. can mold 
uh, to their organization. Um, because, you know, a, a, there are a lot of communities and systems that uh, may not have the, the financial backing to, to spend the money to have engineers write up things and, and do of that sure. nature. So um, we're always willing to, to help uh, sister agencies. Great. Great to hear. We'll definitely pass it along. And uh, this yeah. will be included in the recording here for Absolutely. CBA. So. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Okay, well, I'll turn it back over to Diana for the questions and answers. And uh, thanks again for watching. And a copy of this video is also on YouTube under Fisher Compliance. Thank you.